Welcome to Some Lab. This is the second in a series looking at the work of Basil Valentine and his efforts to make what he called Dragon's Blood, which we're going to call Gold Chloride. If you haven't seen the first video, it's probably worthwhile going back and checking it out. One of the reagents, obviously, is gold, which we're preparing here. And the reference we're using is the 12 keys, a 300-year-old text penned by Basil Valentine and illustrated beautifully with woodcuts. The woodcut is from Basil's third key, so let's take a look at see what we're trying to make and what we've got to work with. In the foreground you see a dragon, obviously, but all the action is in the background. You see a fox that is simultaneously attacking a bird and being attacked by a bird. The birds are probably golden roosters, representing, of course, gold. Now, remembering that the woodcuts were added later, let's have a look at Basil's own words. I won't read it all, though. In the same way, our fiery sulphur must be overcome by means of our prepared water. But after the water has vanished, the fiery life of our sulphurous vapour must triumph and again obtain the victory. But no such triumph can take place unless the king imparts great strength and potency to his water and tinges it with his own colour, that thereby he may be consumed and become invisible. I think it's necessary to identify the elements here. There are two reagents that Basil is starting off with. He starts off with the gold, represented by the king, and also by a couple of other things that are in this passage. And he also uses aquaragia, represented by the fox, that sneaky, crafty thing that's the only thing that's clever enough to actually dissolve gold. And weirdly enough, gold is also given the name sulphur, or sulphurous vapour in a couple of different places, and it's worthwhile trying to figure out what he's talking about here. The process of the reaction produces a vapour that crystallises or deposits on the surface of the vessel that he's working with and that deposit could be either the gold chloride that's that bright red color or the dragon's blood that we're looking for or it could be a kind of a pale yellowish kind of material that actually turns out to be pure gold so both can precipitate the thing is it's not really clear that Basil fully understood that this yellow deposit which he calls a sulfurous vapor was actually pure gold he may have recognized that he may not have we don't know also in the text, we see some details describing the aqua regia. It's called the fox. It's called the water, or the prepared water, indicating that it's a solution. It's got water in it. Later on, it's called the salt sea. And this indicators that it actually dissolves the gold, and gold imparts its brilliant gold color to it in the form of chlorooric acid. And further down, we get the details of the actual process. Add to it a sufficient quantity of the volatility of the bird, then the cock will swallow the fox, having been drowned by the water and quickened by the fire, will in its turn be swallowed by the fox. What seems to be going on here is a process where Basil was using aqua regia to dissolve gold and then applying heat. This drives off first of all the water, but then causes the remaining solid to sublime and form these crystals, combined with some elemental gold on the surface of his vessel. He then adds more of the aqua regia to re-dissolve the gold and try and get some more of the red crystals and repeats over and over and over again. What eventually tips the balance is he ends up with a chlorine atmosphere and chlorine will actually cause the equilibrium to favour the formation of gold chloride crystals rather than have it decompose back to elemental gold. Well this might well be the coolest glassware setup I've ever had to do, kind of appeals to my glassware fetish I suppose. The reaction vessel is a modified test tube, you can see it here, it has a glass rod, when I bring it into focus, a glass rod with some gold on it, and the idea is to flood that with chlorine gas in the hopes of producing gold chloride. I'm able to heat the glass tube up to whatever temperature I need using this heat gun here, and you'll also notice that the glass tube or the test tube is tapered. The idea is that as soon as the reaction is done, I can then hit that with a flame, and I'll have an instant ampule with the gold chloride preserved inside in a chlorine atmosphere. The chlorine feeds in through this tube at the top here, and it's generated in a chlorine generator over here. Uh, this is just standard TCCA and hydrochloric acid chlorine generation uh, procedures available um, just about anywhere. I'm drying the gas using uh, anhydrous calcium chloride in the drying tube, and after the reaction vessel, I've got a couple of traps here. The first is just to prevent suck back. I don't want water or liquid sucking back into the test tube, and the second is sodium hydroxide which will deal with the chlorine gas. Now with this side I've got a mechanism for um, just venting off excess chlorine gas and air. The idea is I actually want to flood the entire thing with chlorine gas before we start hitting the heat. And so that's on the top of the Kleisen adapter and feeding down through to this 
trap here. The other thing that I've got that's a bit interesting here is a way of introducing nitrogen oxide gases into the system. Basil Valentine used aqua regia, which is a mixture of nitric acid and hydrochloric acid, and highly oxidizing, and he dehydrated that by heating, driving off all the water so that he had an oxidizing environment. Uh, I'm just going to feed some nitric acid onto some copper turnings and that should uh, give me the nitrogen dioxide gases and the nitrogen oxide gas that I need. It'll feed through, mix with the chlorine, pass through the dehydrator, the desiccator and hopefully hit the gold here helping it the reaction to proceed. So that's the whole setup and hopefully it works really well. So here we have the chlorine generator in action. It's a simple process of dropping some hydrochloric acid on top of TCCA pool chemical. Quite a standardized procedure. I've followed a variant where, which uses dilute hydrochloric acid. I don't think I'll do that again. The idea is that you're gonna get better mixing of the two chemicals when you do it dilutely, but I found that the rate of chlorine generation was just a little bit less than I was expecting, and that probably had an effect on how quickly and how well the reaction proceeded. And here's the nitrogen oxide gases being produced. I dropped about a mil of nitric acid on top of the copper turnings and you get that very characteristic brown of nitrogen dioxide. Incidentally, I had a bit of a leak about this point on the Kleis adapter. I was able to smell at times faint amounts of both chlorine gas and nitrogen dioxide gas, which is not a good thing. Looks like I'll need to have a fume cupboard if I'm going to do this a second time. Here you can see me heating the reaction vessel and you can see the gold is already discolouring as the gold trichloride forms. That heat gun hits about 200 degrees C, so it's about appropriate for this particular reaction. Trying to get in focus here, you can see that discoloration, and also further up the test tube, you can see actually some has sublimed off and uh, discolored part of the test tube with a nice rose pink kind of a color. You're also seeing a yellowish color form. This is what Basil Valentine referred to as sulfur, although clearly it's not. It's uh, the gold reducing back to elemental gold and depositing on the side of the test tube. And I don't think having it form in the neck of the test tube is going to help with the ampulling at all. Well, as is normal for me, I have a success and a failure. Um, I actually managed to produce some gold chloride, but I have an ampulling failure as you can see here. What that means is in the process of ampulling, two things happened, number one, uh, I managed to, by the process of heat, convert some of my gold chloride back into gold. And uh, number two, I've got a bubble in there, which has prevented um, it from sealing properly, which means that this stuff is going to eventually be exposed to moisture, and uh, so it's not going to last a long time. So, we have dragon's blood, but I think I need to try it again. I was a bit concerned about the cleanup of this apparatus. We've got two toxic gases in there, as well as what looks like to be some unreacted hydrochloric acid and some unreacted TCCA. As it turned out, it wasn't too bad. I simply fed some sodium hydroxide solution through the addition funnel, and it reacted with everything that was in the apparatus. It actually looked quite cool, too. And here's the final result, rapidly decomposing once it's removed from its chlorine atmosphere, which of course happened when I had an ampulling problem. These two photos here were taken about 40 seconds apart, and you can see the rapid change in colour as the dragon's blood that we produced actually starts to revert back to elemental gold. And so, after all that, I start off with gold and finish up with gold. Kind of poetic really, I think Basil did exactly the same thing. If we recall, he was attempting to convert base metals such as lead into gold, and it seems like he thought he'd actually done it. The problem was, one of his starting reagents was gold itself, and he finishes up with some gold, which is hardly surprising. If we remember that he doesn't have an excellent means for measuring the mass of what he starts and finishes with, it's quite conceivable that he can think he's finished up with more gold than he started with, and therefore has the Philosopher's Stone, the great thing that the alchemists were all after. Me, I start off with gold, finish up with gold. It's about 30 cents worth and just enough to stick in my lab book. But it has been an interesting exercise, and one that maybe I'll have another crack at again another time, preferably with a fume hood. That's it for now. See you next time in the lab.